here with the Phoenix team, and today I wanted to give you an introduction to Phoenix's new datasets and experiments. So the velocity of AI application development a lot of times can be bottlenecked by high quality evaluations because AI engineers are often faced with hard trade-offs, which prompt or LLM best balances performance, latency, and cost. And so quality evaluations are critical as they help you answer these types of questions faster and with greater confidence. So today, let's go through uh, an example of doing experimentation for text to SQL. And for this one, we're going to be starting from scratch with without any nice, clean data set of questions, SQL queries, and expected responses. And so first, we're going to install Arise Phoenix, OpenAI, which is going to be our LLM choice for this notebook. Uh, we're going to pull some data from Hugging Face, as well as we're going to install um, Pyero and a few other utilities as well. First and foremost, you're gonna start Phoenix if you have Phoenix already running um, as a hosted service or as a container, no need to do this, but nice thing about Phoenix, you can write it right in a notebook. And then we're going to instrument OpenAI just so that we can get a, a peek into all the calls that we're making to, to OpenAI. We're going to set up nest async IO just so that this notebook can run some async code. And we're gonna initialize OpenAI. Okay, great. So let's now download uh, some information to put into a SQL database. In this case, I'm just gonna take some data from Hugging Face, notably some MBA data should be fun to query and put it into DuckDB so we can get an LM to make some SQL queries. Can initialize that data and now great we have a SQL database with all the different statistics about the MBA uh, from a certain time range. Now we're going to implement a simple text to SQL uh, task. So we're, in this case we're going to use GPT-40. We're just going to start with a pretty powerful model and we're going to construct a simple system prompt. So here we're going to tell the LM you are a SQL expert we are given a single table named MBA with the following columns. We're gonna inject the, the column names from, from our DuckDB instance, and then we're gonna ask it to write a, write a SQL query corresponding to the user's request. Um, we're gonna give it a little guidance here. You know, Don't include backticks or markdown, things like that, so that we get the raw SQL query. Seems pretty good, so let's run it. We initialize it, and we're gonna ask who won the most games. Amazing. Uh, LMs are really cool. So they, you know, automatically kind of infer the schema of our, our database and is able to construct a query. Looks good to me. So let's try to execute it against our DuckTB instance. Amazing. Just outputs Golden State Warriors with 265 wins. So just because it works for this one use case, it might not work for a lot of other use cases. So let's kind of... Uh, create a little bit more examples. So here are some hypothetical questions I've created. Which team won the most games? Which team won the most games in a specific year? Uh, who led the league in three-point shots? I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a mixture. And since we have these questions, let's store that off in uh, Phoenix. So we can use the, the Phoenix client to upload this new data set. We're gonna construct a data frame and just tell it which frames are the questions. And if we run that and we look at the Phoenix UI, we can see that Phoenix has stored off this data set in a, a versioned uh, set of examples that we're gonna run our code over. So if you can look here, we can see the initial commit that's been made, great. Going back over to the notebook, let's define kind of the task that we're going to be testing here. So we're gonna just kind of put together the two parts we had before. We're gonna ask the LLM to generate a query. We're then gonna to try to invoke uh, the DuckDB instance. If there's an error, we'll capture that. We'll capture the results, and we'll actually uh, capture the query as well, just so that we can look at what the LLM is synthesizing. And last but not least, we wanna kind of gut check, you know, whether or not the the LLM is producing something that's usable. So one simple criteria here is whether or not, you know, there's any errors that happen during the invocation, as well as whether or not um, the SQL query is actually producing any results or not. Now let's run the evaluations for this experiment. 
in uh, together with the task. So now we're going to pass into run experiment the data set, the task, and the evaluators. And we're going to actually also send in some metadata just to tell it that we're using GPT-40. Phoenix automatically kicks off this uh, experiment that we track over time. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a summary, but let's take a look at the UI. If we look at the Phoenix UI, we can see the, the different types of synthesis that occurred across the, the five examples that we have, and we can kind of expand this to get a little better view. We can see that um, most of these uh, are producing no errors, although in some cases uh, we do have an error, and then we have some examples that are not producing a result. So let's take a closer look at this one specifically. Here, the question being asked is which team won the most games in 2015? And it's clear that the LLM is able to construct some sort of SQL query. Um, it's saying select where wins or loss equals win, and it says date like 2015, but we're actually producing no results here. So interesting case of the LLM is actually able to produce a SQL query, but the database is not producing anything. And so another thing that we can do is actually look at the prompt um, that is being cr constructed to make this LLM call. So let's go to this example here. And let's look at the trace. So look, if we look at the trace, we can see the, the prompt that we've constructed. Here it says, you are a SQL expert. You are given a single table named MDA with the following columns. Great, this is exactly kind of what we, we designed. However, um, it's producing no results. And what we might notice is that since the query had the word 2015, it's constructing a database query that includes the word 2015. But what if the database is not storing data as uh, kind of like a four character uh, year uh, format? Maybe it's just 15. Um, so that could be an example where it's failing because it's not being given kind of the, the internal examples of what's contained in the database. So let's try to fix this problem. I'm gonna go back to the notebook and uh, interpreting the, the answers, we can see that one of them is not getting you know, proper examples of what's in the data database. So let's take advantage of few shot learning and give it a little bit more examples. So here, instead of just giving it the columns, let's give it an example. So let's construct this new task. Amazing. This time now it properly knows that the database data is stored as, uh, you know, not as a four, uh, four, le four letter um, year, but actually as, you know, just 15. Looks much better. Now let's run that experiment. And then we'll run evaluation. And then let's look at it. Great. Now we fixed that one error. So we've gone from 60% having results to 80% having results. Let's take a quick look at the comparison view. Now for the example where we had uh, querying by like 2015, we can see that we are proper getting the answer Golden State Warriors with 72 wins. That's a quick introduction to Phoenix's new datasets and experimentations. For more information, please check out the documentation.